Many years ago, I was being interviewed for an interesting developer role and I failed this interview. So if you watch this video to the end, I'll make sure that you don't fail an interview question like this one. And the problem that we're going to solve involves dealing with performance optimizations, concurrency, race conditions, locking, and how to iteratively refactor and improve your code. So let's dive in. Let me walk you through the problem context and then I'll explain what our task is. So there's this currency conversion class. It's a static class with a single handle method, and this is just a delegate for an API endpoint. Our request parameters are a currency code, an amount, we get an currency API client that's implemented, and it's talking to a third party currency conversion API where we can get the current exchange rates. So in this code, we've got some basic validation for the currency code and the amount, then we get the exchange rate, which is just calling a method exposed on the currency API client. If the rate is null for some reason, we return not found. Otherwise, we do the conversion and return this as a response. Now, you're probably wondering what's happening inside of the currency API client, and you'll see that there is not much here. We're just injecting an HTTP client. This is actually a typed client configuration, and we're calling the respective endpoint on the third party API. It gives us back some response and we try to access this response to get the exchange rate for the currency code. Now the base currency for this API is the US dollar and then it supports a bunch of additional currencies. Now in the program file, not a lot of interesting things going on, but we are grabbing the API URL from the configuration and the API key. Now, since the API key is sensitive, I'm storing this in my user secrets and I'm using both the base URL and the API key to configure my HTTP client. So this is going to take care of the authentication by passing in the key in the respective header as per the API's requirements. And we're also exposing a get endpoint where we can pass in a currency code and get back the converted value. Now, if you want to quickly test this out, we could send a request using curl. Let's say I want to check what happens if I try to convert $1 into the base currency, which is also a dollar, and we get back the response containing the exchange rate, which is just one. Now, let's say I want to convert a euro and my amount is one euro, then we'll see how that compares to a dollar. Now, there are a couple of more currencies that you can test out. And the API that I'm using is the free currency conversion API. So you can also grab an API key and test this out. I'm going to leave the source code for this entire video in the pinned comment right below. So you can grab it and refactor along with me as we go through this problem. So what's the problem that we are tasked with? Well, we have to improve the performance for our API. And the key critical path is fetching these exchange rates from the external API because we can get rate limited, our responses can slow down, so we have to do something about it. Another key piece of information that we have is the exchange rates are relatively stable. They don't change that often. Let's assume that we can store these for 24 hours and then it's our task to improve this. Now, we also have a couple of constraints. We cannot use any external library to implement this. So how would you go about this? If your first hunch is to introduce some sort of caching mechanism, you would be correct. Now the question is, how would we do it? So we have to assume that everything we implement needs to support multiple concurrent requests. So we're going to operate from that perspective in mind. So I'm going to scroll down. And then the first thing we could explore is using a static dictionary. I can even make it read only. And if I were to use a dictionary, I would run into a problem with concurrent access. So the better solution is to use a concurrent dictionary. And this is a thread safe collection that we have natively in C sharp that we can use for tasks like this. So our key is going to be a string and then we're going to be caching some decimal value. So how we would use it is inside of the get exchange rate method, we can say if cache try get value now our key is going to be, let's say, the currency code. And we're going to capture this in a variable, let's say, out var rate. And if this value is to true, we can return the cached value. So this only takes care of returning the cached value, but not populating it. So we also have to think about adding this value to the dictionary in case it doesn't exist. I'm going to rename this to be, let's say, current rate. And if this value is a null, we're going to add it to our dictionary. Now I'm going to use a slightly different method called add 
or update, I'm going to provide our currency code as the dictionary key. Our value factory is just going to return the current rate. And we also need an update factory in case this value is already in the dictionary. And in this case, I've got to use two anonymous parameters. Also, because this is a nullable decimal, I need to access the value property to be able to pass this in. So this can be our first attempt at a naive implementation of adding caching to this problem. At this point, you should probably figure out that this code has a couple of problems or the interviewer is going to also nudge you in that direction. And I'm going to highlight what a few of them are. So with this setup, we are only adding or updating to the dictionary once. There's no concept of an expiration time and we could explore using some sort of background job that will clear the contents of this cache, let's say when midnight happens, but we could also use a simpler approach and store the time when this was cached and then every time when accessing this value check if this is a fresh exchange rate that we can use. The second problem has to deal with concurrency and running this in parallel but more on that later. So let's introduce a record that I'm going to call a cache entry and it has two properties. The first one is the exchange rate and the second one let's say it's a daytime property and I'm going to say created at UTC. So now I'm going to update my concurrent dictionary to have a string key but instead of caching a decimal value we're going to use a cache entry so now we need to update our code in the get exchange rate method to accept an entry and if this value is too true we're going to return the entry rate but in this line of code we also need to make sure that this value isn't stale so we can do that by taking the current time subtracting the entry created at time from this and then comparing this value to some default expiration time so let's say we want to cache our values for example for five minutes now this also isn't foolproof but it's an improvement from our initial implementation so let's say the default cache duration is five minutes if the value that we get here is less than the cache duration then this is a fresh cache value and we can use it to return the entry rate. Now, what this doesn't take into account is when the API refreshes the exchange rates, which let's assume happens at midnight every day. So there could be a time window where we do end up returning stale values in the cache until they expire, which is in five minutes. But let's say that this is acceptable for our use case. Now we also need to update the factory functions to now return a new instance of a cache entry record where we specify the rate and we can use date time UTC now for when this was cached. And I'll just reuse the same instance and pass it along to the factory below. And our code will continually refresh the entries in the cache every five minutes. One thing I recommend is extracting this little calculation into a helper method let's call it is fresh just to make this code a bit easier to read. And now we can deal with our next problem and that is what happens if we get multiple concurrent requests calling this method at the same time. So we are mostly safe from corrupting the dictionary because what could happen is both of the requests get past the initial check if we don't have a cache hit and then they both call our external API and herein lies the problem. Even with this solution, we would be calling the external API multiple times. Now, where this also becomes problematic is when the cache entry expires, when it's no longer fresh, we would also get a situation where concurrent requests would be calling the API at the same time, and then they would be updating the cache, and then we'd be safe for another five minutes. So this is a typical example of what's called a cache stampede problem or a thundering herd, and it's something that you have to think about in high throughput systems. So back in this interview, I already knew how I wanted to solve this. I knew I needed some type of locking mechanism around the call to get exchange rate async. Now at the time, I wasn't really dealing with any low level code like this. So I went ahead and did something like a lock. In C Sharp, you can lock on some object. Let's say we lock on the cache entry, even though this isn't correct. Let me leave a comment just to make this clear. Just an example and the problem i ran into is trying to call this method inside of the lock statement and what you quickly realize is that you can't call a wait in the body of a lock statement so i spent a couple of moments here because i wasn't familiar with this behavior at the time but i quickly thought to myself and said okay c sharp has other concurrency primitives so i could use something like a semaphore and you will be correct here so let's say i create another variable that's going to hold my semaphore we can use a semaphore slim and initializing it like this allows one thread 
or color to enter the semaphore and the max count just represents how many colors in total can enter the semaphore so with this setup here what we're creating is essentially a mutex a mutually exclusive lock where only one caller can access the semaphore so how you access the semaphore is by saying wait or wait async now let's use the wait async approach which we can await and if you call it like this you will block on this line of code until you can enter the critical section now what's also important here is to wrap this in a try finally statement where inside of the finally block you need to make sure that you release the semaphore so if we move our code into the try block this will be a much improved version than what we had previously but now you have to think about what happens once we enter the critical section because we were blocked on this line of code it's possible that a concurrent request was able to execute this part of code before we did and it's going to add the value into the cache so it would be correct to also check the dictionary again after you enter the critical section we can reuse the cache entry from earlier to perform our check and only if this evaluates to false we're going to call the api and update the cache to store the current value until it expires so this is already starting to look a lot better we are solving the cache stampede problem but this code still has a couple of problems for example wait async is just going to block indefinitely until you acquire the lock and this isn't very user friendly so a better solution would be passing in a time span here and let's say the maximum amount we want to wait is five seconds now in this case the signature of wait async changes to return a boolean and this just represents if you acquired the lock or not so you have to now check if you acquired the lock or didn't and let's say if we did not acquire the lock we want to return some sort of failure condition now in this case i'm going to throw some exception let's say a timeout exception and we can say something like could not acquire exchange rates try again later and we would instruct the caller to just retry and hopefully the value will be present in the cache on the next request and everything will be fine so that's the minor issue in this code we are no longer waiting indefinitely but for up to five seconds before executing the critical section so now we run into a very common problem with any type of locking mechanism and that is when you acquire the lock you also block any concurrent requests which is what we wanted right well yes but we are also blocking any other concurrent requests even for different currency codes than the one that we are trying to currently convert and this means that our lock has high contention basically every api request is going to try to block here and this isn't ideal when these requests don't naturally compete so how could we improve this to only block per currency code well we could reuse a similar idea from here where we have a concurrent dictionary for the cache entries why don't we have a concurrent dictionary for the semaphores our key could also be a currency code and then we could get a semaphore instance so let me comment this out and then the updated code could look something like this i'll say concurrent dictionary string we return a semaphore instance let's call this the logs and we're going to new this up now here we need to get the semaphore so we can do something like blocks get or add and return a default semaphore instance now let me just refactor this and i need to update this to return semaphore slim to respect our previous api so what happens now is we check the cache to see if the value is there if it's not we acquire a semaphore instance and we try to lock because we are using a concurrent dictionary this is going to be thread safe and now we try to lock using the semaphore instance which is thanks to the dictionary scoped to a currency code so we are slightly reducing the lock contention and the rest of the code remains mostly unchanged so this version is far better than our initial naive implementation that was just using a concurrent dictionary however it's still not without its issues but considering the constraints that we were dealing with it's certainly not a bad solution now what are the other things that we could improve here well because we are using a semaphore or in this case a semaphore slim this only works in memory our caching is also in memory so this means this is only going to work for a single api instance if we have multiple instances we can throw this out the window well not entirely it's still going to work except the cache is going to be local per api instance now depending on our requirements this may or may not be sufficient but going through this exercise is definitely helpful as you can start to appreciate how 
complicated caching in the real world actually is and how delivering a production ready solution that also works in a distributed system is non-trivial. At this point you're probably happy that we've got some caching libraries out there that can solve this with a couple of lines of code. You can just plug in a distributed cache like Redis and mostly forget about it, right? So I think going down low level like this and trying to implement something fundamental from scratch can be a very helpful exercise. One more reminder before we wrap up, you can grab the source code for this completely for free from the pinned comment that's going to be right below. Let me know what you think about the solution that I propose here and what you would do differently given the existing constraints. If you want to see how you can plug in a distributed cache and solve this easily, then go ahead and check out this video next. Make sure to smash the like button so this gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.